have any more time for questions and responses, it's now time for member statement. The member from Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. It's great to be back in the House this week. Over the last several weeks, under Premier Ford's leadership, we were able to deliver key investments into Brampton and into Ontario. Speaker, a few short weeks ago, I had the pleasure of joining Premier Ford and my caucus colleagues to announce the location of Brampton's new medical school in partnership with TMU, and this new medical school will host 80 undergraduate and 95 postgraduate students. In over 100 years, this medical school is the first to be announced in the GTA and will be located right across Bramley City Centre in Brampton and with doors scheduled to open in 2025. Speaker, to further support job growth, our government has partnered with Magna International to announce a $470 million investment and expand its operations in Ontario. This investment is expected to bring over 1,000 new high-skilled jobs to the province, out of which 560 new jobs will come to Brampton as the company expands to its eighth location and this new facility will support the development of EV vehicles such as the Ford F-150 Lightning Truck and the future OEM programs. Speaker, our government is working hard to deliver for the people of Ontario and I'm proud that under Premier Ford's leadership, Brampton is no longer being left behind. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements in rotation. Member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. I received a letter in the mail from Judy P. in Oshawa, and she says, quote, I'm not normally what I'd describe as an activist or prone to protesting against my government, but never in my life have I felt more compelled to very strongly voice my objection, disbelief, and frankly horror over the policies of Premier Doug Ford. I feel the need to fight for our health care for my children, grandchildren, family, friends, and all fellow Ontarians. Premier Ford appears to be intentionally trying to cripple our previously world-class health care system in order to make private health care look like it's our best option. His promise to end hallway medicine has failed and turned into parking lot medicine. Never in my life have I had to worry about an ambulance not being available or a hospital not having an empty bed. Never have I had to worry about delays in surgeries or treatments, and yet this is now Ontario. People are dying. Premier Ford has said that he would never do away with public health care for Ontarians, but he's whittling it away and heading for a two-tiered system. And we know private facilities would get the cream of the crop in resources and personnel, making it one gold-level system for the haves and a much poorer system for the have-nots. This will mean more Ontarians living on the edge will suffer and even die. What a legacy. She goes on to say, our health care is something I remember my parents being so proud of. Universal health care came about when I was a young child. It sets Canada apart from many nations. We used to be a shining example that other nations look to with envy. We can't afford to lose our universal health care. It's part of what makes Canada a great place to live. Well, Judy, we have a hell of a fight on our hands to save Medicare. Thank you for your strong letter, and I'm in the fight with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Oxford. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I rise today to congratulate a good friend of mine, Doug Wagner, on being the 2023 Ontario Agriculture Hall of Fame inductee. It's a fitting honour for someone who has spent 45 years dedicated to developing and growing agriculture and agri-food industry in Ontario. Through his work with several organizations, including the Ontario Seed Growers Association and the International Plowing Match, Doug has left a lasting impact on agriculture in Ontario. Perhaps one of his greatest legacies is Canada's Outdoor Farm Show, which he launched in 1994 with Kintijokas and gave the industry a permanent site for an outdoor show. Since then, he has continued to be involved with the Farm Show, becoming president in 2012 and helping it grow into Eastern Canada's largest outdoor farm show. As president, he also helped coordinate the purchase of 100 acres of provincial land to create Discovery Farm Woodstock and make it the permanent home of the Farm Show. He retired as president last year. Doug has always known the importance of creating future agriculture leaders after he worked after graduating from Ontario Agriculture College, he worked in the youth extension arm of the Ministry of Agriculture and Food. He also continues to passionately share his knowledge through 4-H Ontario and the Junior Farmers Association of Ontario. Congratulations again, Doug, and thank you for your lifelong commitment to Ontario agriculture. 
Member statements. The member for Niagara Falls. The 37th anniversary of the death of Tommy Douglas. In 2004, the CBC did a Canada-wide vote to find the greatest Canadian of all time. 1.2 million people across Canada voted. The winner wasn't Wayne Gretzky, Shania Twain, or even Terry Fox. It was Tommy Douglas. Tommy was a father of our university public health care system. As Premier of Saskatchewan, Tommy introduced the first single-payer publicly funded, publicly delivered health care system in all of North America. Tommy this, did this as Premier, while also running 17, that's right, 17 balanced budgets in a row and even achieving surpluses. Keep that in mind when you hear politicians saying we need to cut public services to be fiscal responsible. Before that, government didn't help families with health care costs. Health care was expensive and not accessible to most people. Tommy knew it wasn't right that some people can afford health care. They didn't, and some couldn't. He spent his life trying to make change for the better. We need to remember and honour Tommy Douglas and his legacy. People across Ontario, across Canada, know that universal, public, not-for-profit health care is part of what it means to be a Canadian. We take care of one another. Ontarians, Canadians don't want American-style, private-for-profit health care, where wealthy get faster and better care and lower-income families go bankrupt trying to get health care they need or go with, without care at all. The Conservatives call this profit-driven, called innovation, but it's really the oldest game in the book. It's frankly, it's a cop-out that will hurt Ontarians. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And as Black History Month comes to an end, I want to share with you some exciting celebrations that took place in the riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore, home of the politician who, in 1995, introduced a motion that was passed unanimously by the House of Commons to recognize February as Black History Month across Canada, Dr. Jean Augustine. I was honoured on February the 13th to address a celebration and a fundraiser for pioneer Dr. Augustine, Canada's first black female member of parliament and, to this day, an activist whose work has changed lives. On February 15th, I partnered with Humber College to stage Black Heritage 365. This is the first of an annual event that is created, uh, created to boost the ongoing effort to amplify Black Heritage Month for an, from an academic point of view. This is its first year, and we honoured five outstanding members of our Black community in Etobicoke Lakeshore. Black Heritage 365 featured prominent stalwarts who shared their stories of resilience and resistance that contributed so much to their success. They are the amazing Carla Netta, who is the executive director of the Women's Habitat of Etobicoke, and they do such a fantastic work, Ian Stewart, a pharmacist and owner of a neighbourhood shopper's drug mart, Jacqueline Edwards, president of the Association of Black Law Enforcers, Condone Diaz, who is executive director at Lamp Community Health Centre, and of course, the Honourable Jean Augustine, a longtime trailblazer in our community. Their success is a model for all of us to follow, and we look forward to nominations next year. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Waterloo. Hey, Mr. Speaker, I'm taking this opportunity to highlight the winners of this year's Leading Women, Leading Girls, Building Communities Recognition Program. The Ford government cancelled these awards, but nevertheless, we persisted. Dua Alagar works tirelessly to establish services for the Muslim community as well as new Canadians. Paris Kai is instrumental in developing Homework Hub, a youth-led non-profit organization providing free, accessible educational resources. Sarah Gidlinger is the co-creator of the Bond Park podcast, an ongoing li living oral history of Waterloo Region. Michelle Heyer is a nurse who advocates to ensure internationally educated nurses have the support they need to succeed. Edda Lemlin and Sophie McConnell are grade six students who model inclusion by providing friendship to Sebastian, a classmate and a child with autism who is nonverbal. As associate director of Waterloo Region District School Board, Lila Reed has been an integral part of developing and leading the Women in Leadership Group that supports BIPOC women in education. And Rebecca Short created the Sharing Experiences program where community groups come to the amazing clay and glass gallery to do ceramics and share their experiences. 
Finally, Jennifer Stagger Piotowski is a key leader responsible for bringing ONA into the Waterloo Region Labour Council, strengthening the labour and nursing movement in our community. And finally, finally, Sarah Wilson developed a menstrual equity pilot program for the Waterloo Catholic District School Board uh, called Changing the Flow. You are all inspirations, each and every one of you. Congratulations on winning this award. Thank you. Member statements. <laughs> Member for Chatham, Kent Leamington. Good morning, Speaker, and thank you. Speaker, Ferguson Arthur Jenkins, lovingly known as Fergie, was born December 13, 1942, in Chatham, Ontario, to Dolores Jackson and Ferguson Jenkins Sr. His father was the son of immigrants from Barbados, and his mother descended from American slaves who bravely escaped through the Underground Railroad before settling in southwestern Ontario. As a young man, Fergie possessed a strong work ethic. He was determined and competitive, excelling in multiple sports, including track and field, ice hockey, and basketball. It was baseball, however, and more specifically, his brilliant ability to throw with unique speeds and accuracy that garnered him attention well before graduating high school. In 1965, at the age of 22, he made his major league debut as relief pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. The following year, he was traded to the Chicago Cubs, where he honed his professional pitching career on the iconic Wrigley Field, a, bar, a ballpark known to favor hitters. Jenkins would go on to earn all-star recognition and win the Cy Young in 1971. But as exceptional as Jenkins was on the pitcher's mound, he also played basketball with the Harlem Globetrotters from 1967 to 69. In 1979, Fergie was named a member of the Order of Canada well before formally retiring in 1983 from his beloved sport. In 1991, Jenkins became the first Canadian ever to be inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. This June 10th, please join me in Chatham-Kent as we honour Fergie by revealing his full-size bronze statue, an exact replica of the one that uh, stands proudly in Wrigley Field. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Guelph. Speaker, I rise today to honour the thousands of people who rallied at Queen's Park on Saturday and in communities across the province to tell the Premier to keep his Greenbelt promise, to keep his hands off the Greenbelt. Speaker, we simply cannot afford to pave over the farmland that feeds us, the wetlands and green space that clean our drinking water and protect us from flooding. People are demanding that the government put the public good ahead of a handful of wealthy, well-connected land speculators. The Greenbelt provides $9.6 billion of economic benefits to our economy each and every year, and its natural infrastructure provides $3.2 billion worth of benefits to the province, especially flood protection. It's reckless and fiscally irresponsible for the government to put all of that at risk when the government's own Housing Affordability Task Force explicitly said we do not need to open the Greenbelt to address the housing crisis. So, Speaker, on behalf of Ontarians across the province, I want to remind the government that they work for all the people not a handful of land speculators, and that paving over the Greenbelt and unleashing sprawl on rural Ontario is not the future the people of this province want or can afford. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Order. Order. The next member statement, the member for Brampton North. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good to see you this morning. Uh, it's good to be back. Uh, it's my privilege to rise in the House today and speak to not only the largest automotive expo in Canada, but our country's largest consumer show, period. Of course, I'm talking about the Canadian International Auto Show, which celebrated their 50th anniversary running from February 17th and concluding just yesterday. And, Speaker, it was a smash hit. The auto show has an annual attendance of over 330,000, with visitors coming from all over the country. 
It features more than 650,000 square feet of exhibits, displays and attraction spanning the north and south buildings of the Metro Toronto Convention Centre. I think two of the big draws this year were the North American debut of the life-size Lego Lamborghini Scion FKP37 and the Rochelle armoured vehicle that is helping to defend the people of Ukraine. Speaker, I want to give a special shout out to Frank Note for all his efforts in ensuring this event is a success. Putting on a show of this magnitude is no easy feat. Him and his team pulled it off with class. This show is put on by the Trillium Automobile Dealers Association, representing Ontario's thousand new car dealers, which means at one point they represented a certain member from Brampton North. Speaker, I, uh, I remember working the auto show in the past when I sold cars from Mazda Brampton. And believe it or not, I was pretty good at it. I actually sold the car at the auto show back in 2017. It's a memory I will hold on to forever, and I know uh, the attendees of the, the show will never forget the memories that they built at the show. Uh, I want to uh, congratulate the team on the 50th anniversary, and all the best for next year. Thank you very much. <laughs> Member statements. Member for Scarborough Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is, an honor, it is an honor and privilege to rise today as the first black male of African descent and one of the first three black members elected to the Ontario Progressive Conservative Caucus. To recognize Black History Month in Ontario Legislature. Throughout this month, I had the opportunity to host and participate in a number of events that celebrate the countless contributions and accomplishments Black Ontarians have made to our city, province, and country. These events also remind us of our responsibility to remain steadfast in the fight against racism and discrimination. At these events, I was proud to share what our government, under the leadership of Premier Ford, is doing to support Ontario black communities. Whether it's through the anti-racism, anti-hate grant, or the Black Youth Action Plan, our government is committed to combat racism and hate. Building a stronger, safer, and more inclusive Ontario, this month I also had the chance to visit several community organizations working to support better outcome for black community, including career education, empowerment, the CE Centre for Young Black Professional in my riding of Scarborough Centre. The CE Centre is a focus on addressing social and economic barriers affecting black youth ages 14 and over and helping them achieve financial prosperity, access jobs, placement and obtaining stronger knowledge of themselves and their potentials through youth workforce development, education, and advocacy. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That concludes the time we have available for 90-second members' statements.